Hi folks, welcome to this video. Uh, it's the second one uh, in about three or four videos on VO2 max. So I've looked at a video on factors affecting VO2 max, so what makes you have a higher or low VO2 max. This one is about how we test VO2 max. And you'll be familiar with, you know, a lot of these, if not all of these methods, um, you know, how we're going to test it, how we're going to evaluate it, and what is the importance of doing that. With that in mind, I thought I may as well start off with this. Why are we testing VO2 max? Remember, VO2 max is a measure of your endurance. Just as we measure speed in terms of how many meters per second you can cover and strength in terms of how many kilograms you can lift, VO2 max is the uh, method of measuring your endurance. What is the maximum volume of oxygen your body can take on board and use per minute? The higher it is, the better you are at stamina, aerobic endurance. So why would we want to test it? Well, we want to identify your current fitness levels. What is your current VO2 max? If you are currently training and trying to improve your VO2 max, if we test you regularly, we can see if you're making progress or not. Is your VO2 max increasing? Is it staying the same or worst case scenario, is it getting worse? And that allows us to ensure that our training is being effective. If I put a training program together for you to improve your VO2 max, and I've done three fitness tests recently and you've stayed the same, you know, you've, your VO2 max hasn't changed. My training is ineffective. It's not helping you, it's not developing you. But if your VO2 max is increasing, the training is working, it is being effective. So we're going to look at very quickly four methods and the advantages and disadvantages of each. We can do something called direct gas analysis. We can do the Queen's College step test. We can do the Cooper 12 minute run, or we can do the multi-stage fitness test, also known as the bleep test. But at college level, you've got to be able to give it its full name, the multi-stage fitness test, not the bleep test. So with direct gas analysis, what's happening here is this guy is running, but he could quite equally be rowing or pedaling on a bike. That's it. So, so, so the run, row, pedal, and the speed level or revs per minute, rows per minute, etc., is gradually increased equal intervals. So you might be running on the treadmill, and every two minutes we're going to increase the speed by two kilometers an hour or something like that. At each of those intervals, as it's increased, the level of oxygen the person is using is recorded via this mask where they're breathing in and out, and the computer records it. And obviously, at some point, they're going to reach a level or a speed where the person can't run anymore. They can't run any faster, they can't row any harder, whatever it is. And the level of oxygen used when that subject is forced to stop, when they have to stop, that is their VO2 max value. Well, what are the advantages of this direct gas analysis? Well, it is direct. It gets to the point we'd have to predict anything. We'd have to do a calculation. This computer will tell us exactly the maximum volume of oxygen used by that performer at the point at which they had to stop, which is their VO2 max. So we don't have to use anything to change that data into something else. It's also an accurate, valid and reliable way of doing it. We can repeat the test precisely. The results are very, very specific because it's tested exactly the VO2 max. And within that, that validity, we can get them to row, run or pedal. So it can be made very specific to the athlete. If I'm to VO2 max test a cyclist, I'll put them on a bike and do it. If I want a VO2 max test a runner, I'll put them on a treadmill and do it. If I want a VO2 max test a rower, I'll put them on a rowing machine and do it. So it can be made very, very valid and accurate to the performer. So the disadvantages of this test then, well, you know, this is all very, very expensive. So we need a lot of expensive equipment, so it's not cheap. Um, equally, this is certainly not something you would do with elderly people or those with medical conditions, heart conditions, things like that. Very, very dangerous. Why? Because it is a test to exhaustion. This guy is going to keep running until he can't run anymore. So it's a test of exhaustion, which isn't good for these people. But equally, as it is a test to exhaustion, you need high levels of motivation to see how it's very easy to hit the stop button before you're actually there, in which case we're not getting to your true VO2 max. You're stopping yourself a little bit before that. So, you know, there are positives, there are negatives to using this technique. So another method then, one I bet you're all a bit more familiar with, the Cooper 12-minute run. And as, as you already know, often done on a 400-meter athletics track, they'll put cones at regular intervals so you can track your distance covered because you're going to try and cover as much distance as possible in 12 minutes. And the distance covered in metres is then used to calculate and predict a VO2 max value for you. The big advantages are this can be done on large groups. Our direct gas analysis can only do one person at a time. So if this can be done on large groups as is being done here. It's very simple and cheap. You don't need an athletics track. You've just got to have an area of land where you know the distance around it. You could measure that out on a big field. 
and there are data tables available. So we can get your distance in meters, just look at that, and then on a table and convert that straight to a VO2 max value. So it's quite simple and effective to use. So the disadvantages, then we're going to see some overlap here with the last one. However, this one, where's its big problem? It's a prediction only. I put there, predict VO2 max, so you might have spotted that. It's not a direct measure like direct gas analysis was. We are using meters to predict a VO2 max, and that's not as accurate. But what does it share with gas analysis? It's a test to exhaustion. You've got to run as far as you can in 12 minutes. So again, motivation can be an issue. Again, it should not be done with elderly people or those with medical conditions, because running 12 minutes nonstop for those people can sometimes create more problems. And the big disadvantage is it's not specific to all sports. If I am a runner, the coup for 12 minute runs, okay. What if I'm a rower or a cyclist? I don't normally run. So it's not gonna be a good indicator of my VO. It's not gonna get me an accurate VO2 max value. Right, so the Queen's College step test. Now, this is a bit of a weird one, particularly if you've never done it before. So what you do is you do continuous stepping on and off a box that is 41.3 centimetres high. Why that high? I don't know. They developed it at Queen's College. They know what they were doing. So for whatever reason, it's 41.3 centimetres high and you step on and off that box like you if you're doing step aerobics for three minutes. Now, the pace at which you do that is set by a metronome or it used to be set by a metronome. It's one of those old devices where the pendulum swings and it goes tick, 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 tick. No doubt there are apps out there, there are digital versions of that, but it, it makes sure that you step at the same pace and at the correct pace and at a constant pace. What we then do is after the three minutes are up, five seconds after the three minutes are up, we take your heart rate for 15 seconds and the recovery of your heart rate, how quickly your heart rate is dropping back down, is used to predict your VO2 max value. Very weird test. So why was it invented? What are the advantages of this method? Well, as I said, the previous problems with the two, with the Cooper and the direct gas analysis is that, you know, you've got to wait to exhaustion. So they're not good for the elderly and people with medical conditions. Whereas this one is fine to use with those people. All you're doing is stepping on off a box at a relatively slow pace for three minutes. It's also simple and cheap. You need a box and you need the like a metronome or the app, as they said, there's apps for it now. And once you've got the heart rate, the recovery of the heart rate, which is easy to take, you can then use data tables to show or predict what VO2 max value will be for that individual. So the disadvantages then, well, again, like Cooper Run, it's a prediction. We use your recovery heart rate to predict VO2 max as we use meters to predict VO2 max in a Cooper Run. If it's a prediction, it's not accurate or not as accurate. Again, the test is not sport specific, just as the Cooper Run was okay if you do lots of running. What if you're a rower? What if you're a cyclist? Equally here, you know, it's stepping up and down. It's, it's very unspecific to the majority of sports activities out there. And also your recovery heart rate used to predict VO2 max. Not only can doing the test affect it, but the time of day can affect your recovery heart rate. How much food and fluid you've had and when you ate it and the current levels of it inside your body can affect your heart rate recovery. So yes, it's very good because it's submaximal and we can do it as you know, as a last resort on these people with medical conditions who are elderly, but it's by far not the you know not the most accurate method of assessing VO2 max. And finally, then the multi-stage fitness test. I'm sure we've all done this and hated it. So you know what it is: 20 meter progressive short run to exhaustion. The pace at which you run is set by an audio cue, so you all run in time with the beeps. Hence why it was also called the beep test or the bleep test. You drop out when you cannot maintain that pace anymore, you know, for three consecutive shuttles. And the level and shuttle that which you drop out to, that equates to a VO2 max value. So it's all stuff that we know, all stuff that we have done. So you've probably seen a lot of patterns here now, and you know, this, this is good because it's a relatively easy subject, I think. The advantages of this, again, we can do it on large groups, as we can see here. It's simple and cheap again. And we've got data tables telling us what each level and shuttle means in terms of a VO2 max value. So a lot of the similarities, so a lot of the advantages for a lot of these tests are very similar to each other. And finally, the disadvantages, again, you know, it's a prediction. The level and shuttle you get is going to predict your VO2 max. So again, it's not direct measurement. Again, it's a maximal test to exhaustion. So motivation is going to be an issue. You've done it yourself. I bet we all dropped out of the, of the shuttle run, multi-stage fitness test before we had to, just because we couldn't go, we felt like we couldn't go anymore. Again, it's not good for the elderly and those with health conditions because of the maximal nature of the test. And again, it's not specific to all sports. If you're if you're into a running sport, perfect. 
But if you're a cycler, cyclist, sorry, or a rower, it's not specific to you. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of overlap and the temptation in the exam is to just put all the same advantages and disadvantages down. A lot of them are similar to each other, but that might be a task for you to do. Look at which ones carry the same advantages and the same disadvantages. And, you know, that allows you to, to box it up in your mind a little bit better. So should any of these come up in the exam, you know exactly what you need to write. Hope you found this video useful, folks.